Hello, I am Dr. Vincy Anthony, and today I'll be talking to you about introduction to orthodontics. The contents include the definition of orthodontics, aims of orthodontics, scope, and some previous university questions. Orthodontics basically originated from two words, mainly orthos, which means to correct, and odontos refers to teeth. The definition of orthodontics as put forward by the British Society of Orthodontics in 1992, it says that it includes the study of the growth and development of the body in general and the face and jaws in particular as influencing the position of teeth, the study of the action and reaction of internal and external influences on this development, and the correction and prevention of arrested and perverted development. The aims of orthodontics include structural balance, functional efficiency, and aesthetic harmony. Together, they are called Jackson's Triad. Functional efficiency depends upon the correct relationship of teeth to each other and the orientation to the skull as a whole. Structural balance is achieved by maintaining a balance between the dental alveolar system, the skeletal system, and the soft tissue. Aesthetic harmony basically is a matter of proportion in shape, size, and orientation of the dental organ. The scope of orthodontics includes correcting the dental problems, that is by moving teeth, correction of the skeletal problems, that is called dentofacial orthopedics, and alteration of the soft tissue envelope, and that occurs as a result of the correction of the dental and skeletal problems. The branches of orthodontics include preventive orthodontics, interceptive orthodontics, corrective orthodontics, and surgical orthodontics. The definitions are preventive orthodontics as defined by Graeber is the action taken to preserve the integrity of what appears to be the normal occlusion at a particular time. Interceptive orthodontics is that phase of the science and art of orthodontics employed to recognize and eliminate potential irregularities and malpositions in the developing dentofacial complex. This definition was also given by Graeber. Corrective orthodontics recognizes the existence of a malocclusion and the need for employing certain technical procedures to reduce or eliminate the problem that is the malocclusion. And surgical orthodontics includes the surgical procedures that are carried out before, during, or after active orthodontic treatment. Next, we come to these are two pictures of removal appliances. Removal appliances are basically appliances which can be removed by the patient. Fixed appliances, as the name suggests, cannot be removed by the patient. Mm, these are, uh, you can see these are the brackets. And this is uh, on the molars. These are the molars. molars. We keep a band with a tube. Okay. This is the arch wire. This picture is also actually a fixed appliance, intraoral picture of a fixed appliance treatment. Here you can see something extra. This is in the gingiva. This is actually a TAD, that is a temporary anchorage device or a mini screw implant that is used to enhance the anchorage. And here you can see there is a coil spring for space closure. This, these are two pictures of functional appliances. Functional appliances, uh, this is the twin block appliance and this is the Frankel appliance. This will be discussed in your later classes. Coming to the historical background, the first writings on crooked teeth were given by Hippocrates. And the first recorded method of orthodontic treatment was that of Celsus, he used actually finger pressure. Guilford coined the term malocclusion. And Pierre Fourchard introduced the first recorded appliance that is a called the bandelet. It is basically an expansion appliance. You can see the teeth were tied to a rigid framework to get the expansion. 
The term orthorontia was coined by Le Fillon, who was a Frenchman, and orthodontics was coined by Sir James Murray. Norman Kingsley is the first person to use extraoral forces, and he introduced the obturator and cleft lip and palate patients. Edward Hartley Angle is called the father of modern orthodontics, and his contributions include a publication of a book on orthodontics in 1887. In the same year, he introduced the concept of the key of occlusion, in which he considered the maxillary fasbola as the key of occlusion. He also introduced the line of occlusion for maxillary and mandibular arches. In this line of occlusion, you can see it's basically a smooth curve or catenary passing through the central fossa of each upper molar and across the cingulum of the upper canine and incisor teeth. When coming to the mandibular arch, the same line runs along the buccal cusps of the posteriors and the incisal edges of the lower anterior teeth. Yeah. Combining these two concepts of key of occlusion and line of occlusion, he published his classification of malocclusion. Angle's classification has four classes, normal occlusion, class one malocclusion, class two malocclusion, and class three malocclusion. You can see, the normal, mal normal occlusion and class one malocclusion are quite similar when looking at the molar relation. The difference is in their alignment. You can see there are there is a slight crowding in this class one malocclusion. And Anger's concept of occlusion was that he he understood that and he was very much for the non-extraction philosophy because he thought that for a good functional occlusion you needed the full complement of teeth. He also developed several appliances, the angles E-arch, the pin and tube appliance, ribbon arch appliance, and the edgewise appliance. And owing to these contributions and inventions in the field of orthodontics, E-H angle is called the father of modern orthodontics. These are the various appliances introduced by angle, the E-arch, the pin and tube, the ribbon arch, and the edgewise appliance. The edgewise appliance is basically the forerunner of today's straight wire appliance. Calvin S. Case is famous for the great extraction controversy of 1911. He was a proponent of extractions in orthodontics, and this controversy was between Calvin S. Case and Angle. Charles H. Tweed is a student of Angle. He's from the USA, and he was also a proponent for extractions in treatment, seeing the results of the patients treated by Angle who had a lot of relapse after treating, uh, when they were treated non-extraction. He introduced the Tweed edgewise appliance in which rectangular archwise were used. Raymond P. Begg was from Australia. He also was studied in the School of Angle along with Tweed, and he was also a proponent for extractions for management of the malocclusion. He introduced the Beg appliance after he went back to Australia based on the concept of the attritional occlusion and he used round wires for the appliance. This is a picture of the Beg appliance. You can see the bracket. It's a vertical slot, means the wire is inserted from the above or from gingivally and it is held together by a lock pin. You can see this. Lawrence F. Andrews introduced the straight wire appliance and he gave us the six keys to normal occlusion. This is the straight wire appliance. You can see these are metal brackets and these are ceramic brackets. Here the slot is horizontal, unlike, unlike the big bracket, which had a vertical slot. This is, you have to put it uh, edgewise or this is a horizontal slot. The radiographic cephalometry was introduced in 1931 independently by Broadbent and Hofrath. The activator was introduced by Vigo Anderson in 1908, the Frankel appliance by Rolf Frankel, and the pioneers in Indian orthodontics include H.T. Merchant, A.B. Modi, and H.S. Sheikh. The Indian Orthodontic Society, which is our governing body, was formed on 5th October 1965. The unfavorable sequelae of malocclusion include a poor facial appearance, psychological and social problems, 
a risk of caries because they would not be able to maintain proper oral hygiene, predisposition to periodontal problems, then speech defects, a risk of trauma to the upper anterior teeth, especially in patients with a class two malocclusion, because their teeth will be quite proclite. Then temporomandibular joints may also be there and oral habits. Basically, the aim of our undergraduate teaching is to train you to recognize the different malocclusions and, if possible, to advise a preventive and interceptive treatment. And you can do also the corrective treatment for simple malocclusions like spacing. And if a complex case comes, make sure to refer the case to the specialist. The first specialty in dentistry is orthodontics. These are a few questions from previous university papers. The first one is Jackson's triad. That's, that's the aims in orthodontics. Then the contributions of angle were asked and also the unfavorable sequelae of malocclusion. Thank you.